Hello, good afternoon. My name is Isai Rea. Okay. My name is Isai Rea, and I am a student at Kinju Magnet High School of Medicine and Science. And this project is a continuation on my research pro project funded by Step Up by NIH and NIDDK this summer. And the title is Nicotine Plus a High Fat Diet Increases Oxidative Stress and Triggers Cardiomyocyte Apoptosis in Male Mice. As we know, smoking is an important risk factor for cardiovascular disease and shows cytotoxic effects of myocardial cells. Oxidative stress is an important mechanism associated with smoke-related cytotoxicity. General effects of nicotine consist of an increase in pulse rate, blood pressure, and an increase in plasma-free fatty acids and catecholamine. Levels of lipid peroxidation and the generation of free radicals are the process associated with the pathogenesis of cardiovascular diseases. Nicotine has been found to disturb the antioxidant defense mechanism in mice fed a high-fat diet. Available data suggests that smoke exposure leads to myocardial dysfunction, intracellular calcium mishandling, cardiac defects, possibly via the mitochondrial damage, apoptosis, and fibrosis. However, the role of nicotine in inducing oxidative stress and myocardial apoptosis is not known. The objective of this study was to identify the effects of nicotine alone or in combinations with a high-fat diet and mouse ventricles. This diagram illustrates both the extrinsic and intrinsic pathways of apoptosis. On our upper left-hand side, we have the extrinsic pathway illustrated as the fast ligand binds to the fast receptor, which then activates caspase H, leading to the activation of executioner caspases 3, 6, and 9, which ultimately leads to cellular apoptosis. There is also a point of intercommunication between both pathways where cleave beadage is bead, and it activates the intrinsic pathway of apoptosis. Our hypothesis was that nicotine and a high-fat diet provokes cardiomyocyte apoptosis through the activation of both the extrinsic and intrinsic pathway. Our objective was to characterize the signal transduction pathways for cardiomyocyte triggered by nicotine alone or in combination with a high-fat diet. We utilized 10-week-old male mice, which were housed under a controlled temperature and photo period, and were divided in four different treatment groups. Our normal diet, MD, our normal diet with nicotine, our high-fat diet, HFD, and our high-fat diet with nicotine. The mice were fed either a normal diet with 5% fat or a high-fat diet with 34.9% of calories derived from fat and 60% calories derived from fat. Mice on either diet received twice daily IP injections of nicotine or saline for a period of 10 weeks. Mice were then killed with a lethal injection of sodium pentobarbital. Hearts were removed and weighted. The ventricles were fixed in 4% paraformaldehyde for routine histological and immunohistochemical or immunofluorescent studies. The immunohistochemistry for measuring oxidative stress was done by utilizing a rabbit polyclonal 4-HNE antibody to identify increased expressions of lipid peroxidation induced by nicotine, a high-fat diet, and nicotine plus a high-fat diet. Lipid peroxidation signifies oxidative degradation of lipids, which produces fatty acid radicals causing oxidative stress. We use the tunnel method to measure cellular apoptosis. In situ detection of cells with DNA strand breaks were performed in paraformaldehyde fixed paraffin ventricle sections by the terminal deoxynucleotide transferase TDT mediated deoxyutypnic enabling, also known as the tunnel technique using an apotop peroxidase kit. Methyl green was used as a counter stain to detect non-apototic nuclei. The enumeration of the tunnel positive nuclei was done by using the rate of cardiomyocyte apoptosis was expressed as the percentage of tunnel positive apoptotic nuclei for total nuclei present within the microscopic field. This slide demonstrates hematoxin and eosin stain for general structure of the ventricular tissue. We have our four, control group, our four groups, which will be the same throughout the rest of the slides. On our upper left-hand side, we have our normal ND control group. We have our ND plus nicotine group, our high-fat diet group, and our high-fat diet plus nicotine group. 
in high fat diet and high fat diet plus nicotine, we see that there is accumulation of fat present. The expression of 4 h &E, lipid peroxidation, which is also a measurement of oxidative stress, was done in our groups. In our normal control group and our normal diet plus nicotine, we see there is minimal to no expression of oxidative stress. However, once we move on to our high fat diet group, and in particular, our high fat diet plus nicotine group, we start to see that levels of oxidative stress have been increased. The expression of clique caspis 2, which is an upstream caspis, which is responsible for activating both the intrinsic and extrinsic pathway, was all another mechanism that we've seen for in our normal control group and our high fat diet group. We see that there is minimal to no expression of this cleave caspis 2. However, interesting enough, in our normal control group plus nicotine, and once more in our high fat diet plus nicotine group, we started to see elevated levels of expression of this caspis 2. We also stain for the expression of the fast ligand, which is part of the extrinsic pathway. In our first three groups, our normal control group, our normal diet plus nicotine, and our high fat diet group, once again, there is very minimal expression of this fast ligand in the ventricular tissue. However, again, when we get to our high fat diet plus nicotine group, we see that the expression of the fast ligand has been increased significantly. The expression of caspis A, which is part of the intrinsic pathway once more, was also done. And in our normal diet group and our high fat diet group, there's also minimal staining. We start to see some staining in our normal diet plus nicotine group. Again, once more, like in our previous slides, our high fat diet plus nicotine groups also has an increased amount of expression. Finally, when we get to our tunnel staining, which measures the percentage of apoptotic nuclei, we see that the green dots represent the healthy nuclei. And where we start to see these reddish brownish spots in our normal diet plus nicotine, our high fat diet, but very much in particular, our high fat diet plus nicotine group, these reddish brown spots indicate apoptotic nuclei or nuclei that are going through apoptosis and are already essentially dead. The graph illustrates the slide below where we have our normal control group with very minimal, like 0% apoptotic nuclei. Then as we move on into our next two groups, our normal diet plus nicotine and our half fat diet group, there is a little increase, about 5% apoptotic nuclei. Then once we get to our high fat diet plus nicotine group, in retrospect to our other three groups, we see that there is an exacerbated amount of apoptotic nuclei where 20% of the nuclei were indeed apoptotic. So our result was that nicotine, when combined with a high fat diet, induced greater oxidative stress in ventricles than either treatment alone. The induction of cardiomyocyte apoptosis was associated with increased oxidative stress and activation of caspis 2. Caspis 8 was also activated by increased oxidative stress in cardiomyocytes. There is an exacerbated effect of nicotine on cardiomyocyte apoptosis when combined with a high fat diet. In conclusion, nicotine in combination with a high fat diet increases cardiomyocyte apoptosis by increasing oxidative stress. Both the extrinsic and intrinsic pathways are involved in nicotine plus a high fat diet induced cardiomyocyte apoptosis. Nicotine, including e-cigarettes plus a high fat diet, is likely to exacerbate effects of high fat diet on cardiac abnormalities in obese patients. Thank you. Great job, Asai. Uh, time for a question. Okay, go right. Very nice talk. Thank you. Um, so, is there any correlation with body weight of the animals in terms of the high food? Um, diet, did it change the body weight significantly? And did you see a correlation with your, your, your measures? Yes, so when we had the body weight in our high fat diet group, we saw that the body mass of the mice was increased to our normal control group. And we saw that as the body mass index of the mice was increased, also the rate at which cellular apoptosis was going through was increased. So telling us also that a high fat diet alone is just bad because it increases oxidative stress, which ultimately at the end leads to cellular apoptosis. So we were trying to apply that in future studies that when patients, when they just have a sedentary lifestyle, they do not take care of themselves, they eat 
high fruits and acids, they're also killing their cells. And the nicotine, did the nicotine bring down the weight or did it Yes, change? that was something interesting that we found. We found that nicotine had an effect where it lost, it like took away the amount of fat in it. However, we noticed that it does have a good effect that reduces the fat present in both the cardiomyocytes and in a previous project I did with liver cells. But ultimately, the liver increases oxidative stress, which also leads to cellular apoptosis. So you have a win because you're losing weight, but you're also destroying your cells. So you mean the bad way? Bad way yeah, right. the bad way. And some of the other talks from our group will just show a little bit better graphs of that, so you'll see that very much. Eva? Okay, so I have a question. So are you actually correlating, or have you actually thought about correlating um, um, oxidative stress in your studies because it is um, related to an upregulation of phagocytosis? Did you actually check for upregulation or downregulation of phagocytosis because it goes along with oxidative stress? And also, um, When you saw a decrease in the, uh, what, the fat, when you use nicotine, mm -hmm. so did you look at um, the regulation of phagocytosis as well? Okay, okay, that was a great question. However, at this moment, since I only focus on the apoptotic part of this, I am not able to answer your question, but I'm pretty sure that Dr. Andrani here will like to answer your question. <laughs> well, this is a very short project, only for eight weeks period. So in this project, we really didn't look at anything else, just apoptosis and how it is controlled by Eclipse Caspers too because it's upstream caspers. But next year, we are expanding all these studies. This is the beginning of this cardiomyocyte apoptosis study. So, thank you. <laughs>